Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always, and today I wanted to make a new startup video for the Aviate B Harrier 2. As in the previous video, I made a rather big mistake that um, something I overlooked in the startup procedure that I quite frankly thought was a bug, but after having this issue come up multiple times and over and over and over again as I'm starting up the Harrier, I really delved deep into the uh, Aviate B, Aviate B Plus, and Aviate B NA Harrier 2 Natops manual, looked at the checklist, looked at many different things in the jet, and found that I had actually made quite a big error. So I wanted to correct that and apologize to you guys in case there was any confusion or it caused any issues for you guys and so I just wanted to correct that with this video here. So uh, without further ado we'll go ahead and hop into the cockpit. Alright so first thing we want to do of course turn on our battery, turn on our generator, want to turn on our fuel pumps and our fuel proportioner, turn on our fuel cutoff switch, Turn on our Q feel and our SAS for our pitch, roll, and rudder. Now, the thing that was causing me so much of an issue uh, before is the digital fuel control switch right here. I thought that was in the on position on default in the startup of the Harrier, but I actually found out in reading the NATOPS manual that you're supposed to shut that off um, when you exit the aircraft for and it goes in for maintenance or getting loaded up for its next sortie or what have you. So you're going to want to push that to up and now it's turned on. If you didn't push that up and you pushed your throttle up, there would be no fuel injected into the engine and your RPM wouldn't increase, which is obviously a big deal. So because I thought it was a bug, my workaround was to use the manual fuel switch. Now you want to definitely not do that. Um, because it'll cause uh, engine issues for you in terms of engine power and the like. So, now that we've got that confusion sorted, we'll go ahead with the rest of the startup. Warning, warning. Turn our engine start switch to up. our canopy, make sure that guy's locked, which it is, and now that our engine started up, we'll push our throttle forward into the idle descent. Turn on our flaps, put our anti-skid to on since we're on a tarmac. Go ahead and turn the cockpit lights on so we can see a little better. Turn on our anti-collision lights. Turn on our MPCDs. Turn on our HUD. Turn on COM1 and COM2. Turn on our UFC. We can make our stick disappear so we can take a look at our navigation console. We'll flip this guy over into nav. We'll turn our DMT to on, our FLIR to on, and our pedo heat to on. And then we can take, make our stick come back. I have that bound to a modif modifying button and my trigger so that it's very easy to simply uh, just toggle that stick off using a button that's easily accessible on my stick. We'll go over to our engine page and our horizontal situation display. Alrighty. 
take a sweep around the cockpit, turn arm or ejection seat, that's important. Take a look, everything on our HUD looks normal. Engine values look normal. Everything looks good to go. So, there is a parking brake lever on the other side of the throttle, which is impossible to see. Um, so I actually have that bound to a button on my HOTAS. So we'll go ahead and press that button and release that parking brake. You saw the aircraft shutter a little bit there, and that is the parking brake kind of going ka-chunk and coming off. And we'll go ahead and push the throttle up and start our taxi. And as you can see, we made sure we got that digital fuel control switch and we had no issue. And we'll go ahead and start taxiing to the runway. As I stated in my previous startup video, how you handle the aircraft on the ground is just as important as how you handle it in the air. And if you can handle it very well on the ground, and you're taxiing, your startup procedures, any, everything you can think of in that way, uh, it really shows off your professionalism as a pilot. It's one thing my grandpa, who flew A1 Sky Raiders in Vietnam, definitely imparted on me. So you saw me turn on our uh, RWR, our expendables, and our ECM. Let's put those in standby. Just want to make sure we don't accidentally hit those uh, countermeasures buttons on our stick while we're taxiing. We don't want to hurt any ground crew or anyone working on the aircraft or anything like that. As you taxi in the Harrier, you'll notice there's a slight pull, either left or right. And I think that's due to the strange landing gear configuration uh, of the Harrier. And that's easily counteracted with your rudder. In the Harrier, when you taxi, you don't want to taxi too fast, as that strange uh, inline landing gear configuration can certainly make you tip if you take a corner too quickly. I tend to not taxi any faster than maybe about 12 knots, and even that is probably a little bit too fast as you saw me slow down for this 90 degree turn to the runway. And as you can see, we're staying right on the center line, showing off our professionalism to the tower and any onlookers. And we'll go ahead and stop short. If you look at the Chuck's Guide, you'll see there's almost 40 different things you have to do to start up the Harrier. And as you can see, we went through all of those relatively quickly. And once you kind of get the hang of it and know what needs to be turned on, what switches need to be in what positions, it actually goes a lot quicker than maybe the Chuck's Guide would suggest. So once again, guys, I apologize for my error in the previous video. I'm sorry if that caused you any confusion or stress in your Harrier startups. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and uh, I will see you next time. Fly safe, guys.